We're Will. And James. Fiancés, world travelers. And your out traveler tour guide. Last year was tough. Vacations were canceled, being replaced with extreme wanderlust and severe cabin fever. Now the world is finally reopening and we are ready to pack our bags, travel across the country, and see how local businesses and communities are ready to welcome back travelers. Join us as we hit the road to visit our favorite LGBTQ destinations because it's time to get back out there. We've been able to travel to Palm Springs, Las Vegas, Austin, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, and Portland as we get back out there without Traveler. Now we are back in our home city of Los Angeles to explore the LGBTQ plus culture that is here. LA is a massive city full of diverse cultures and it is impossible to experience it all. To give you a taste of what to expect when you visit the City of Angels, we are headed to the LGBTQ plus epicenter of LA, the City of West Hollywood, to meet with the mayor and members of the city council to hear about what makes WeHo the go-to spot for LGBTQ plus travelers. My name is Lindsay Horvath. I have the honor of serving as the mayor of West Hollywood. I'm Council Member John Erickson and I was just elected in November 2020. Really excited to be serving the city of West Hollywood. I'm the youngest member of the council and it's just a great honor to be here. My name is Seppi Schein. I was also elected in November 2020. I was the first woman of color and first out LGBTQ Iranian American elected anywhere in the world and I'm really excited to be here too. I love this community. I love being of service. I love helping people. And I think that local level is really how you connect with people. There are so many people who are here uh, living on their own. And so people in our community become family of choice for each other. I really wanted to help build that community spirit and, um, you know, the, the kind of quality of life improvements people like to have. And now I am a, a millennial renter, uh, somebody who's still paying off my student loans. Um, but definitely somebody who has found home in West Hollywood. It's 1.9 square miles of the most fun you'll ever have in your life. West Hollywood has it all. West Hollywood is a place if you want to go to the hottest restaurants. There's one opening almost every month it seems. We have the Sunset Strip, Santa Monica Boulevard, Melrose and Beverly in the Design District. On our east side we have the lot which has Showtime and Own Network and you name it, it's in West Hollywood. So much of the culture that the rest of the world consumes is right here in West Hollywood. And so it's certainly a privilege to serve as mayor of the kind of community that we are. Uh, we're known as the creative city, so we always like to have a good time. There's something fun and creative, artistic, entertainment oriented, always happening here. Whether it's at you know our music venues, the iconic Roxy and Troubadour and Whiskey that everybody knows about, or the nightlife, the bars and nightclubs, especially in our Rainbow District. You want to go to the Abbey, you want to go to High Tops, you want to go to a new bar called Stash that's opening up, or you have of bars like Gym Bar that's coming back that we saw closed down during the pandemic. But then the community really rallied behind it and brought it back and now we're gonna have it here and everyone's really excited for it to be a part of our our community, that staple again. We have some of the most incredible hotels in uh, Los Angeles are located in West Hollywood. Um, really cool, really inviting, really welcoming. And so when you stay here, you can go all over. You can go to the beach in less than 20 minutes. You can go to downtown in 20 minutes. So uh, practically wise too, it's a great opportunity to come here um, so you can go to other places. We want everyone to come and visit West Hollywood. I mean, where else would you want to go? <laughs> West Hollywood is so much fun, and a commitment to the LGBTQ community is just in our DNA. Over 40% of our population identifies as LGBT, and uh, our nightlife really uh, is oriented towards a queer community. West Hollywood has a really unique history and a really powerful story of, I think, communities coming together, people that have maybe felt like outcasts in their own world, their own families. It wasn't just a city of one type of person. It was a city of everyone. It was really a patchwork of individuals wanting to make sure that there was a home anywhere in the world that you could come to and know that you're going to feel loved, you're going to be accepted, and that ultimately at the end of the day you're going to have a good time because it's West Hollywood. I love that even though we are a small city, we are a powerful city that has had, has had so many firsts and will continue to 
push for progressive change and many more firsts for our LGBTQ community until we have full equality. We were at the forefront uh, as a community uh, fighting for LGBT people to get married. Um, at the height of the a HIV AIDS crisis, we were uh, fighting for protections and safety. Um, we've been a voice for the voiceless and, and fought for human rights uh, even before we became a city. And, and that's, uh, that's why people know that when you come here, you'll be safe, uh, you'll be cared for, you'll be celebrated, and uh, you'll find something for everybody here. One uplifting story that came out of this pandemic is how the community rallied behind Gym Bar, a beloved spot in the West Hollywood community that was able to reopen its doors after being forced to close during the pandemic. My name is Hunter Heleniak. I'm actually a managing partner. The original Gym Bar location was located right up the street, two blocks away from us at 8737 Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, it opened in 2009 of October. When the pandemic hit, it was a little, uh, a little confusing. We didn't know what to do because uh, the government basically shut us down um, and took our ability to create business and commerce away. It was definitely a waiting game um, up until uh, July, I guess that is, when, when uh, we were forced to make a decision that we could not afford to stay in that location anymore. Telling the community that we had to shut our doors was probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my life. Um, I'm 40 whatever years of age and I've had to make a lot of hard decisions and choices and communicate that with people and this was by far the hardest one. The, the community's connection to the old space and, and the outpour of support through the closing of the old space um, really sparked this collective outpour of, of just pictures and nostalgia and, and support and just good times in, in a safe space. We were sent a little angel um, in a, a landlord who offered us um, this space that we have right now. I know, it was kind of a sign of, of that it wasn't ready or time to close that community or that business, however you want to look at it down. Um, and we continued to push to reopen and we didn't skip a beat. You know, it was almost as if we transported here and our, our regulars, our clientele, just immediately dropped and snapped back into this home away from their own home. You know, the GoFundMe, I think that was just, I think in a lot of business decisions or cases, it's, it's a last ditch, ditch effort to survive and it's a last ditch effort to, to try and, and revitalize something, a, a, a lifeline, uh, you might say, you know? And it, it wasn't even for us specifically it was for everybody. You know, it wasn't until we opened our doors, I stood outside and I looked at how busy it was, how crowded the bar was, and I could actually recognize probably almost every person that was standing outside on the patio. All smiling, all hugging each other, all just dropping back in to this family that we've all created over the past 12 years. Why should people come to Gym Bar? It's a vibe and I think they should feel it. We all support each other, you know, from our bartenders, from our management staff, from our customers, you know, we all support each other. So if, if you wanna, you know, get into what it's like to be in a bar and not feel like you have to drown yourself away from all maybe the, the negative things in your life. Come here, we just wanna have a good time and we just wanna make sure you do too. To top off our experience in Los Angeles, we are headed to Pride Night at Dodger Stadium to watch the Los Angeles Dodgers play baseball as part of an event they host and make happen every year to kick off Pride festivities in the city.
Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that we were able to inspire you to get back out there whenever you're ready. We loved showing you the city we call home and hope that you're able to visit Los Angeles soon. For more information on LGBTQ plus travel destinations, visit outtraveler.com.